Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. routine duties of the highway patrol is to ensure the safety and protection of the ordinary traveler on the public highway. But on September 2nd, the most amazing coincidence ever encountered by the highway patrol took place. Because of a strange case of mistaken identity, John and Martha Coulter, innocent travelers, were marked for violent attack. At the moment, they were carefree, happy, unworried. But by a twist of fate, they were even then being marked. I'll run up to filling station and have it done. All right, John. It'll give me a chance to freshen up a little before dinner. Look, do you want me to bring the bags in before I leave? No, I don't need them. You can bring them in when you come back. Well, I'll just drop the tire off and leave it. We can pick it up on the way out tomorrow. All right, hmm? dear. But remember, this is our first vacation together in over seven years, and I don't want to spend any little alone. So hurry. Oh, you know, it seems like a second honeymoon. After all these years not having the children along, huh? You deserve this vacation, John. You worked so hard these past years, putting Margie and Johnny through college. What with me in the hospital so much, it hasn't been easy on you. You know something, Martha? I love you. I'll be right back. Goodbye.
purpose. I'm sorry to bother you again, but I, I just don't understand it. My husband should have been back long ago. Maybe something's happened. You better give me the police. Highway Patrol, Officer Larrabee. Yes, ma'am. Can you give me a description of the car, please? Yes, I have it. But don't you think you should give him some more time? Oh, I know my husband. When he says five minutes, he doesn't mean an hour. All right, Mrs. Colder. I'll see if we can locate him. Headquarters to 3310. 3310 to headquarters. What's up? Worried wife. Check the service stations in the vicinity of the Pinewood Motel for a John Coulter driving a gray sedan, license Illinois 888-313. Repeat, Illinois 888-313. Larrabee, I'm sorry to bother you again, but he still hasn't come back. No, we've had no report of an accident, and I've already alerted the patrol unit in that area. 3310 to headquarters. I understand, Mrs. Colder, and how you feel. Yes, ma'am. Can you hold on a minute, please? Headquarters by. I found the car all right. The registration in the name of John Coulter. Farmer passing through here spotted it. The car and everything in it's been gone through. No sign of Coulter. 10-4? Ten 10-4. Four? Ten four. Did you hear that? What shall I tell her? So we found her husband's car. We'll call him when we hear more. Mrs. Coulter, we've just received information that your husband... Look, mister, you can only go so far playing dumb. That gray sedan is yours, isn't it? Yes, but... And you're from Chicago, aren't you? Yes. And you pulled into the Pinewood Motel this morning, didn't but, you? Uh... Then where are the diamonds? Please, I don't know what you're talking about. No! Where are they? But he was sure looking for something. Couldn't find it, so they took Colder. That's the way I'd figure. I called in for the lab men. They might turn up some prints. What about the guy that owned the other car? No help. I sent him home. Oh, that's fine. Search the woods. You might find a body. If you want me, I'll be at the Pinewood Motel. I want to talk to Mrs. Colter. Yes, sir. Officers and auxiliaries of the highway patrol failed to turn up John Coulter, either dead or alive. Oh, if, if you'd only listen to me, please. I, I'm a cabinet maker. I can prove it. There, there's things in my car. We're that not going back to your car, but, but mister. my wallet here. Look, look in my wallet. My union card. I, I'm a cabinet maker. I know nothing about diamonds. Would I have a union card? There'd be no reason for it. No. I'm a cabinet maker. Furniture. Tables and chairs, uh, please. Just could be. It's the truth. Well, I'm going to find out. Well, what are you going to do? That's pretty obvious, isn't it? Oh. I'm going to tie you up. Then I'm going to make a phone call. 
And heaven help you if you're lying. Please. But I don't understand. If somebody stopped John to rob him, why did they take him away? That's why I want to find out what was in the car. Just our luggage, what anybody would take on a pleasure trip. How about money? Traveler's checks. My husband doesn't carry cash. What business is your husband in? He's a cabinet maker, mostly hand-carved pieces. Is he employed? Yes, by the Leonardo Company of Edison, Illinois, for 20 years now. We were on our vacation, our first... Mr. Matthews, why did they take him? Have you got a picture of him? It's, it's in my purse. Would you get it, please? Highway Patrol Headquarters, please. It, it isn't a very good one. Well, that'll do fine. Hello, this is Matthews. Check the Chicago police on a John Calder, cabinet maker, employed by Leonardo Company in Evanston. What's that? Okay, check that too. I know this is a silly thing to say, but I'll try not to worry. Reservations for the same room I had last time, number 10. Don't let them switch it. As we used to say when we were kids, do you see anything green? What is this, anyway? You just checking in? Yeah. From Phoenix, Denver, Kansas City. I come from Chicago. Why? Oh, I'm sorry. Hey. Matthews, Highway Patrol. I'm Harry Barlow. What can I do for you? Would you come with me? I'd like to ask you some questions. Oh, well, sure, but my wife, she'll be worrying. Only take a minute. All right. Just a minute. Cool. All right. You from Evanston? Town next to it, Wilmot. May we come in? Certainly. Thanks. Now, what's this all about? Do you two people know each other? No, I don't think we've ever met. No, but the pleasure's mine, Mrs. Uh... Mrs. Calder, Mr. Barlow. You come from adjoining towns around Chicago. Well, there are over five million people around Chicago. What are you getting at? Mr. Barlow, do you carry anything valuable enough that somebody might want to rob you for it? Money, securities, something like that? I know I saw your badge, but do you have any other identification? Yeah, sure. Here, take a good look. No offense, Matthews, but I have to be careful. I'm from Dixon and Barlow, Chicago. We're diamond merchants. I'm carrying diamonds. And it figures. How's that? Well, yours and Colder's car are the same make, model, and color. They come from the same state. One license number is 888-113. The other is 888-313. You both arrive at the same motel on the same day, a man and a woman in each car. Well, that is quite a coincidence. Maybe the diamonds are the coincidence. How's that? Well, you see, Colder was kidnapped. He was mistaken for you. He's still missing. That's why I'm here. Mistaken for me? Anybody know you were carrying the diamonds? No, absolutely no one. A man in my business doesn't shoot his mouth off. Your wife knew. Oh, she wouldn't talk. How about somebody in your office? We have no office force. It's just my partner and myself. Your partner? Well, yes, he knew I was on a selling trip. You're not implying... No, no, I'm just adding one thing on top of another. Yes, but what you were saying I'm not was... saying anything. The possibilities are saying it. Highway Patrol Headquarters. But Al Dixon has been my partner for 10 years. Now, this is Matthews. Run a check on Al Dixon of Dixon and Bottle Diamond Merchants in Chicago. Find out if Dixon's been in touch with anybody in this area. 
Yeah, that's right. How long are you going to stay here? I'm leaving tomorrow morning. I'm due in Lake City at 3 p.m. Is this motel got a safe? Certainly. That's why I always stay here. Put your diamonds in it right now. All right. I'll be in touch with you. Mr. Matthews. Yes, what? What's this all about? That's why we call a lead. It might help to find your husband. Fifty to headquarters. Go ahead, 2150. I want a stakeout at the Pinewood Motel. I'm coming back to headquarters. 10 4? 10 4. Sure, Dixon, I heard you, but that doesn't change it. You must have given me the wrong license number. I said 888 113, not 313. Yeah, but the same kind of car. Listen. You got the wrong man. Now go and get the right one. But maybe I'm hot. The cops are probably looking for the guy I took. Anybody see you take him? No. Where have you got him? It's stashed away in the woods. Well, then it's working for you. The police are looking for the man you took. Now look, my partner's scheduled to leave the pine wood in the morning. He's due at Lake City at 3 p.m. Now he'll be easy to pick off anywhere between pine wood and Lake City. Maybe, but I don't know. Remember our deal. Payment on delivery. I'll see you in an hour. Thanks very much. Search details covered five square miles. No colder. 3310, widen search. 10-4? Ten 10-4. Four. Ten four. Give me a bottle on the phone right away. Mr. Barlow, can you hold on just a moment, please? Dan Matthews of the Highway Patrol. See if the sheriff is here yet. Well, Mr. Barlow, I've just received a teletype from the Chicago police. Do you have a customer in Clifton? Oh, it's about five miles from your motel. The address is 175 4th Street in Clifton. Clifton? No, I don't think we have any customer there. Why? Well, the report says your partner made two phone calls to Clifton and received four from public phone booths in this area. That was in the past two weeks. Sure we have no customer there. Al hasn't any relatives or friends in this part of the country, or, well, I'd have known about them. Yeah, I'll check it and get back to you. Thanks. The sheriff's here now. Check this out for me. Tell the stake out of the Pinewood Hotel. I'm on my way. Mr. Matthews. Oh, thanks for helping me out on this case, Sheriff. Still only deputy. Will I be brief you? On the phone, the Coulter case, he said, that you need me as a decoy. Will I do? Yeah, fine. We might not be decoying anybody. The guy we want might be a thousand miles away by now. Or he might make another try for the diamonds, you think? Well, it's a possibility. If he does, well, we want to be around. Might get rough. I'm forewarned. And armed, I hope. Tommy Gunn. Let's go. Find what won't tell. went over to stay with Mrs. Coulter about an hour ago. No one else saw her go? No one. Look, isn't this liable to be a little dangerous, this decoy business, especially for you, ma'am? Why don't I just leave for Lake City on schedule with the police escort? We're after the man who kidnapped Coulter. We've got to get him out in the open. He can tell us where Coulter is. Oh, yes, I see. Uh, I'm sorry. I guess I was thinking more about my diamonds. Let's see. It's 9.30. If you were to arrive in Lake City by 3, you'd leave now, wouldn't you? Yes. I'm sure the guy we're after knows that, too. I hope he makes a try. Let me have the keys to your car. This is the key to the ignition. Thanks. Another briefcase. The diamonds are still in the motel safe. You all set? The bags are all ready for you. Thanks for helping. Good luck. We'll need it. Carrying the Barlow luggage and his portable radio transmitter, Matthews and Deputy Sheriff Warren gambled that the criminal would be caught in their trap.
150 headquarters. Uh, go ahead, 2150. I'm 10 miles west of Pinewood Motel on County Road 22. I'm on route to Lake City. Our patrol unit's in position to render assistance. Affirmative. 10 4. In the mirror, car coming up fast behind. the diamonds. Drop your gun, we're the police. I'm going after him, alert headquarters. Put down your gun, you're back on the highway, I haven't got a chance. All I need is a car, cop. I'll get me one. Throw it down. I got one left, cop, and it's for you. Throw down that gun. Where's Colder? Who's Colder? Where is he? Come on, don't make it murder. Uh, he's in a clearing off Highway 22, up a dirt road about 10 miles south of Pinewood. Call headquarters. Tell him for Mrs. Colder. There's a guy Dixon in Chicago got me into this. Don't worry about it. You'll have plenty of time to talk the whole thing over with him. Move. See Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, it isn't what you drive, but how you drive that counts. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.